Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates and we are starting with a physique update of Stefan Matala at one week out of his uh, Mr. Olympic qualifier and he's going to get that qualification for sure, but we all know that he was already qualified for the Mr. Olympia 2023 However, he didn't show up. Why? Well, everybody was wondering, everybody was so disappointed. Uh, Instagram pages were making memes about him being missing, being wanted. Eventually, he made a story in which he explained that the reason was that somebody in his family was unwell and he wasn't able to travel to the US and compete. As you guys know, this guy is from France. And it was really disappointing to not see him up there amongst the top pros in classic physique because I think this guy would have made a serious impact because he is that good. Alright, now let's take a look at his physique at one week out. Uh, so he's gonna dry out until the show, but uh, check out the gyno. He is starting to form a little bit of gyno. Nothing, 10 milligrams of Nolodex for 10 days won't fix. It's not that bad, but yeah, he should address that immediately. Now, as far as conditioning for one week out, it looks good. It looks very good, but like I said, he's gonna dry out and on the day of the show, he's gonna look peeled. Now, the biggest thing that I gotta note here is uh, the back. He made some serious improvements. Um, he added some serious thickness to that back. I mean, look at his back. I would like to see a little bit more width, but as far as the thickness of the lats, the density in that back, look at this. Look at the Christmas tree. Like, it is good. It's very good. Maybe his posing can be a little bit uh, tweaked. Maybe he can open up more in some poses. There is his signature pose. I think he was more conditioned before. But like I said, he's gonna dry out. And I'm sure he's gonna be there at the day of the show. Now, take a look at the back once again. I gotta go over this one more time. Because it's a serious improvement right here. I mean, his back was fine. It was good before. But, I mean, look at it now. Look at all the, the fibers. Uh, all that maturity and graininess in those lats, in those lower lats especially, this is not something you see every day, especially not in classic physique. This is really reminding me of Dorian Yates, I mean those lats, the way they are inserted and how dry and hard they are, this is definitely a sight to be seen, something you don't see every day, especially not in classic physique. But as you can see when he hits that pose, it's not looking that impressive, and I think it is posing. I mean, look at his legs. He is not doing basically anything with those legs. He can tweak this pose a lot and make himself look much, much better. I mean, if you compare the way he is hitting the pose to guys like Chris Bumstead, Terence Ruffin, Ramon Dean, Urs Kolacinski, Brian Ainsley. I mean, those guys really know what they're doing, but I don't know if they have this kind of back thickness. I mean, Terence Ruffin and Brian Ainsley, sure, they also have really good backs. But it's a lot more about the way they're posing, and I know Stefan is criticized for not having lats, but I think it's, again, I think it's only the way he's posing, he's not popping them up, he's not opening up, uh, he's not showing them, really, I think it's just a posing tweak that can be changed really quickly. So once that is fixed, I mean, the sky is the limit for this guy. I don't know who has these kind of genetics, I mean, this kind of roundness and bubbly type of look with crazy graininess and the ability to actually get super shredded he has the lines basically everywhere you know in his lats you just saw it in his chest his chest is so straighted and so thick at the same time his quads also and i'm sure this guy can get even more conditioned more shredded so with this kind of shape with this kind of muscle bellies with this symmetry with these clean lines and fresh type of look I mean, this guy can do a lot of damage at the Mr. Olympia. So once again, I'm sure he's going to qualify very easily now. And hopefully next year, there will be nothing that's going to prevent him from competing at the Mr. Olympia. And once he's up there on that stage, I think he's going to be compared against the top guys. I think he's going to make one of the first call-outs. I think he can crack that top eight. And once he is up there, where is the limit? I have no idea. I think he can do really well at the Mr. Olympia. What do you guys think? Tell me down below. All right, next up, we got a little physique update of Andrew Jack, the one month after the Mr. Olympia. And here he is taking a photo with Larry Wills, now almost classic physique uh, pro, who, by the way, filled out, like, a lot. I mean, he didn't look this, this big and full when he competed in classic physique, so I'm assuming he barely made the weight and now... He is probably eating everything in sight and he blew up. Now he looks like an open bodybuilder rather than like a classic physique guy. 
and Andrew Jack next to him doesn't look that much bigger, but Larry is out angling him. However, Andrew is looking really good. He's looking full. I mean, his biceps, his uh, chest, his abs, his lats are popping, his uh, quads are looking good. But those are all his strongest body parts. We all know what his weakness is, and I wouldn't say it is back anymore. It used to be, but I think he improved that back a lot. I mean, look at it right here. It's arguably the best back in this lineup. I mean, maybe Crisio had more defined, more conditioned back, and maybe Brandon's back is flowing better because he has shorter arms and, you know, bigger forearms. Maybe that's aiding a little bit to the, to the illusion of this pose. But, like, if you look at the back itself, like, Andrew's back is really good right now. It's massive. It's thick. It's, it's wide. He improved it a ton. But as far as his lower body from behind, he didn't really do that much. I mean, his conditioning wasn't really great, but even if it was, I don't think he would have those details in the glutes and the hamstrings. So hamstrings and glutes also, that's the area that he needs to improve. He needs to bring up those hamstrings to make them bigger and more detailed, more matured. And also the glutes as well, like they need more separation, more maturity, so that, that's what he needs to work on. Not his upper body from behind or from the front, it's his lower body from behind that needs the most work. And what he's doing about it? Well, he's learning from the best, he's training with uh, Kai Green. So he just posted this video on his YouTube channel, you guys can go ahead and watch it. And Kai is basically trying to help Andrew understand certain things and uh, improve on his weaknesses. Now, guys, we can all hate Kai as much as we want for lying to us so many times, tricking us into believing that he's coming back when he had zero intentions of doing so, but if you talk about him as a bodybuilder, I mean, he was a damn good bodybuilder. In my opinion, probably the best bodybuilder that never won the Mr. Olympia. Here, he's standing next to the 2019 Mr. Olympia, Brandon Curry, and that's how much bigger Kai Green was. I mean, this was before Brandon Curry made more development, he definitely grew later after this and got bigger before he won the Mr. Olympia, but, you know, he didn't grow that much. He grew maybe another 10-20 pounds, but, yeah, you can see that Kai was definitely a monster, and it's crazy that Brandon actually had the angle here. So Kai was kind of known for two things, two body parts. His lats, I wouldn't say his whole back because his traps were underdeveloped, but his lats and also his legs overall. From the front, they were crazy, but from behind as well, they were insane. Like he had crazy hamstrings, really massive, really thick and really detailed and separated. And his glutes were also really good. Maybe it's all genetic, but maybe there is something that he can pass on to Andrew Jack. And you guys know that Kai is a philosopher, and he philosophizes a lot about training as well. And he's often doing some unorthodox exercises in the gym, and the way he's performing also can sometimes be different. So maybe there is something that he knows that Andrew Jack doesn't know, that if he implements, he can actually make some serious progress, especially in those hamstrings and glutes. So I'm glad that Andrew Jack didn't train arms with Kai or chest or something like that. They trained what Andrew is lacking, so he's probably aware of what his issue is and he's trying to fix it. And if he does, if he improves that, then I can see him leap forward next year. I can see him in the top 3 with Samson Dower at some point. What do you guys think? Tell me down below. Alright, and finally, we got another physique update of uh, Nick Walker who is going through a serious injury of his hamstring, as you guys know, and in the caption here he says, just trying to stay lean. And I gotta say, he's doing that very successfully. But he's not only lean, he's also really big and, and, and full and hard, so I'm assuming he's still on the juice. I mean, he dropped out of Mr. Olympia like a week before, so it's been five weeks since his prep ended. And I would assume that since he's injured and unable to train really hard, he would use this opportunity to go off. But if he went off five weeks ago, I don't think he would look like this. I don't think he would have this kind of conditioning and this kind of hardness and fullness. So I think it is pretty obvious that he's still on. And unfortunately, he's unable to train legs. So if he's only training his upper body, 
I don't know how good that is for him. I mean, his legs were underdeveloped last time when he lost to Samson Dauda at the Arnold Classic and he needed to bring up those legs, not the upper body. And now his upper body is all he can train. And as you can see, the way he looks, it seems like he's training it hard and he can't train his legs at all. So what's that gonna end up looking? I have no idea. Uh, we'll see. I mean, I, I think it would be a smart time now to take a break from everything, but maybe he's just too depressed, you know, from skipping the Mr. Olympia, and I think he broke up with his girlfriend recently, so he probably decided, you know, to, to keep doing it because it's keeping him, you know, driven, motivated. He has something to do, so yeah, I get it, but as far as his career as a bodybuilder, as a bodybuilder that wants to win the Mr. Olympia, I don't think this is the wisest thing to do, but it is how it is. You guys can tell me down below in the comment section what do you think about it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.